Hi guys, Jodie here, Decorous Vintage Designs, and in today's video, I am going to be showing you the process that I took to achieve this very bright and bold grungy look. So stay tuned for that. So behind me, I have an armoire that I painted um, yesterday. And, and I decided that I actually don't like it. Um, and I'm always telling you guys that it's absolutely fine, you know, to paint something um, and then not like it because then you can always repaint it. And I'm just kind of going to show you today that's happened to me on this occasion. However, I do feel like um, you kind of learn some of your biggest lessons and failures. So for this, on this occasion, I, I'll show you, in fact, let me show you her first. So she's got a very large bum. <laughs> I don't know if I would be able to walk if my bum was that big, to be honest. No wonder she's a little bit hunched. And a very strange boob going on there as well. Seems very strange. Yeah. However, it did... Uh, I don't know why it's so high. <laughs> it did kind of teach me how to... Um, it got me shading a little bit, which is something I'm trying to teach myself. Um, and it got me using colours, you know, more muted, neutral colours that I wouldn't normally use. However... As you can see, she's totally not very well proportioned and it's not something I would really want on an armoire. So yes, yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys that it happens to the best of us. The first thing that I'm going to use today is fluff. I've left the top off this overnight, so let me show you how thick it is. It's very, um, hang on, let me show you. Can you see? Can you see that thickness? So obviously don't go buying paint just to make it thick if you feel like it's gonna ruin it. Uh, what you can do instead if, is if you want some thick texture, it's just to add a tiny, tiny little bit of Dixie Bell's uh, sea spray, which is a texture additive. I wasted no time in covering this lady up. It was really good fun to paint. However, as I said, she did not work out. Um, and now it's time to try something a little bit different. So just with my chip brush, I am stippling on the fluff. In fact, I ended up painting in all kinds of different techniques and directions. I just wanted lots of different texture building up for this piece. If you don't want a lot of texture and you are wanting to paint over an already painted piece then what you can do um, is just give it a little bit of a sand. I'm not saying sand it down right to the bare wood, that is not necessary at all with chalk paint, um, especially Dixie Bell's uh, chalk mineral paint, however um, you can give it a little bit of a sand if you just want that smoother finish and you want to remove any sort of texture build up from the paint that you have already applied. Okay, so next up I have Flamingo, which is this very pretty coral colour and also it's a sea spray, which is a texture additive by Dixie Belle and also, also, I've got a chip brush, which I'm going to stipple it on with. Try and get the lid off. <laughs> I swear there's a knack to this, hang on. Got it. Okay, next up you need to find a random pencil to stir it with. When you stir your sea spray, make sure you get like right down to the bottom there. Uh, because otherwise it's, it tends to settle at the bottom and then gets really clunky. You want to make sure it's really nice and well mixed. There we go. Other tip, if you get it on your hands, make sure you wear trousers that you can just do this too. <laughs> so by dabbing my paintbrush and also um, having the texture additive, I'm going to get lots of texture build up. Not too fussed if some of the white still peeks through underneath. I'm totally fine with that. Um, looking back, I probably didn't need the white actually, but I don't know, as I say, this is kind of one of those process videos where I'm not sure where I'm going until I'm there, so I build on stuff and build on stuff, so not everything is always necessary. Um, and also, I'm having big chunks of texture in some places and leaving it a little bit thinner in others. same again with my sea sprite but this time I'm going to mix a little bit in mermaid tail. This time though it's going to be very textured because it's very very gloopy this time. Thank you. 
It now looks like it's contracted mermaid tail chicken pox or something. Looks a bit strange right now, but it's fine. I'm gonna try something um, that I haven't tried before. I've got a feeling, and I think I know how it's gonna turn out, but I'm going to try it anyway. So I'm going to mix some of this copper with sea spray, but because of the salt, saltiness in sea spray, I've got a feeling it might just make it rust, but I'm gonna give it a try anyway. Um, I'm going to apply it in the exact same way as that. <laughs> So when it came to actually distressing the piece, I didn't find any copper at all. So either the copper um, did patina and it turned green and I couldn't distinguish it from the mermaid tail or um, the pot of copper, just I just couldn't distress it maybe. I'm not sure, um, but this part is totally skippable, I would say. I don't really feel like it added anything uh, to the overall finish. Once that had dried, I applied lots and lots of daisy all over the piece. I put it on very thick, covering up a lot of this texture. Um, and then in the middle of the armoire, I painted in some fluff. So that was just a highlight. I am using the same brush for all of this. It's just going to be a very thick, rough base. Um, if you feel like you um, are struggling a little bit because of the texture, just spray bits of water and just keep that paint moving. I actually lost a better recording of this, so I'm sorry if it's not very clear, but as I say, I put daisy everywhere, um, I left some of the texture peeking through, and then I put some fluff as a highlighter in the middle and just blended that in. I've left this piece overnight, and I'm going to show you what I've come back to today um, before I do the next thing. All right, so you can see the texture. You can see some of the colors. So it wasn't totally dry when I went in there with the um, mermaid tail sea spray. And so this is why it was, it was a bit of a happy accident, really. So the mermaid tail there, it was still a little bit wet when I was adding the yellow and the um, coral, the flamingo down there. So these streaks were a happy accident. And you can see how it's kind of like almost darkened a little bit at the edges as well. Um, from mixing with those. So this is what we've got going on and it's time to start bringing this together. The first thing I did was grab an artist scraper and just start scraping some of those thick clumps of texture off. You can't just get a big paint scraper for this. I'm just going to be totally honest. I couldn't find mine. I am packing up my workshop to move and I must have packed it away somewhere. So um, I might have made life a little bit harder for myself here. Um, get yourself a big paint scraper. However, I did like this because it did mean that I got into more of the nitty gritty texture. And what you can see here is what this does um, is by scraping off the top of the sea spray, it allows all those colors underneath to start peeking through to look like a natural patina. If you're liking this video as well today guys please don't forget to like and subscribe um, all of your support is always appreciated <laughs>
Um, and I've just realised that I'm matchy matchy. <laughs> it wasn't intentional, I promise. Um, yeah, I think I know what I need to do. All right, I apologize again here, guys, because I lost a little bit more footage with the rusty nail. However, I applied the rusty nail in the exact same way as I did the mermaid tail with sea spray all over the piece. I am then, once again, going in with Daisy um, in the middle of the piece and a little bit of fluff. But on the outer edges, I'm also adding some kernel mustard to sort of darken those edges up a little bit. So that's the Daisy. Um, we're getting some highlighting done here and you can see that some of the rusty nail texture is uh, still peeking through a little bit and that's fine um, it, it can be really hard to totally cover the texture but we don't want to and yeah and then once I've applied this and I've done my highlighter I am going in with the kernel mustard and then I'll go in with some pine cone so if you think maybe like an onion and it's get it's really light in the middle and darker around the edges I'm sure there's a better better analogy than that so having fluff in the middle then daisy and then kernel mustard and then some pine cone and then once I dried I got some 120 grit sandpaper and started lightly sanding all over the top I didn't use my paint scraper this time because I didn't want to go that far down um, and then I just like let all those beautiful colors underneath come through for that lovely sort of texture and patina effect and then lastly I applied a base of clear wax and then went in with some best dang wax in black to really make this piece look really aged and burnt and grungy I feel like it's got a really kind of bold burnt look about it somehow um, and then once I had applied the dark wax everywhere I then went in with a little bit of white wax which I will show you in a mo um, there we go and I just put some on a sponge and softened some of those edges up with the dark wax just so it didn't look so you know so so strong Okay, and here's the finished look. I hope you enjoyed the video and you enjoy the look. Slightly different kind of video today, uh, just because, uh, mainly because this one nearly beat me. <laughs> so it was a crazy creative process kind of video. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, guys, take care, happy painting, and bye-bye.